Good morning, everyone, and very warm welcome to this third and last day of the World Anti-Bullying Forum. Uh, we have this uh, start with this um, uh, keynote panel session in a moment, uh, but first, uh, there is important to know that to prevent bullying and harassment in schools, it is crucial that politicians and decision makers give schools the right resources to do preventative work. I'm very proud to introduce Gustav Fridolin, Sweden's Minister of Education, who will be opening this day for us. The issue of bullying and harassment is something that our present government has shown a lot of interest in, and they, for example, made a great effort to support the student health care in Swedish schools. So it's with great honor and great pride, I leave the opening speech to you, Mr. Gustav Fridolin, our Swedish Minister of Education. Thank you very much. School can really be a magical place. Thinking of it, student is probably the only work each and every one of us will have where you every day are expected to be a little bit better than you were the day before. Children packing their school bags for the very first time are getting ready for one of life's big adventures. The knowledge they are about to acquire is what will carry them through life. Teachers will open doors for new words. Friends they are about to make will stand by them for life and form their expectations towards other persons. A worldview will take form. This is my own experience from school gro growing up. I remember that when other things in life were uncertain, school were a safe place. When few others were there, teachers made time in press schedules and gave chances, probably more chances than I deserved. My own yearning for knowledge grew from here, from the school as a place where I wanted to be and where I could be me. School buildings, pedagogical IDs, hierarchies, all of that may change. But one thing remains true everywhere and in every time. Learning starts in the relation. It is in the respectful relationship between a teacher and a student that knowledge may be rooted. It is in a safe environment that may be place for the student's development. This comes down to a couple of clear questions. Will you feel, surrounded by your classmates, that it is all right to try, to make mistakes, to try again, to make achievements? Will you meet high expecta expectations from the teachers and get the support to reach higher than you or them may have thought possible at first? Dr. Anneli Ferlin at the University of Gävle has made interesting studies of this by following teachers from preschool to high school and looking for answers about what makes teaching successful. One answer is that it often comes down to the teacher's awareness and professionalism in making the relations in school work, both relations between teacher and student and student relations. What I'm saying is really this. Bullying is always the sworn enemy of learning. A student afraid of what might happen at break will not be able to focus during class. A student afraid of what comments that might be provoked if the hand is raised will not show what's learned or ask questions to learn more. Most children in Sweden are not being victims of bullying. A vast majority thinks school is fun. Nine out of ten students think that teachers and students are treating each other with respect. An impressive effort to prevent bullying is being made in many schools every day. But this is still not enough. The students that face bullying are being put through things no one should have to experience. They are getting damaged and given scars that may never heal. And combating bullying is a work that therefore must take many different shapes. There is no single remedy or miraculous method. It is all about steadfast, long-term work that should be based in children's rights, 
scientifically grounded methods, and what's proven effective. The government is working in a couple of areas to support the work that is done in schools, where change is happening in reality. And I would like to point at the width and the depth of this support. We introduce early efforts to discover need of and provision of additional support. Many times, students in need of additional support have not been given this until what's started as small problems have grown out of proportions. It is a tragedy to hear about cases where a student has been bullied for years and no efforts have been made to identify the problems or give the right support. To compensate for those years of lost feeling of safety and lost learning is, of course, impossible. Bullying must be stopped early. The early efforts mentioned is a package of measures. One is to discover absence from school that could be a sign of other problem. Few indicators are as distinct when it comes to the student's well-being at school as absence. As part of this package, teachers are giving bigger mandate to provide additional learning support without unnecessary delay. The Swedish school inspectorate have observed that in many cases of bullying, Students that, has a, that students that haven't got the right support in the learning are either victims, perpetrators, or both. We invest in student health care. Being bullied can overshadow everything else in school, and the right support must be provided. Many times, the teachers can be that support, but other times, there is a need of specialists working in teams with the teacher. The government invests almost 700 million Swedish crowns to strengthen student health care. This makes for a more accessible and more preventive health care at our schools. In many cases, the student health theme is a driving force in the school works for a safe learning environment. We also reinforce the funding for psychiatric health care for children and young adults, as well as funding for social and medical youth guidance centers. We work specifically with bullying against girls and LGBTQI people in schools. The Swedish Federation for Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender and Queer Rights, RFSL, and, public, uh, the, and the Public Health Agency of Sweden show statistics on young LGBTQ per persons being significantly more exposed to discrimination, violence and harassment than others. Other reports show that girls' exposure start at an earlier age and that this bullying often can be more invisible for the school. Bullying is traditionally seen as physical aggr aggressiveness, but it is ex extremely important that we see and counter bullying whatever form it takes. The government has given the Swedish Agency for Youth and Civil Society the assignment to develop handbooks for teachers and others working with creating better environments for young LGBTQI persons. The Swedish National Agency for Education which will also evaluate the efforts of the program Mentors in Violence Prevention, which is a program for preventing sexist violence. Sweden's municipalities and counties will be given support for a new project aimed at to fa facilitate sharing their experience of best practice gender work. We work to combat racism and xenophobic intolerance. Some of the bullying is openly racist. The bullies connect negative attributes to nativity or ethnicity and get others to share them on, as happening in politics, I may add. It is a vicious bullying that scars people for life, and the government has given the Swedish National Agency for Education and the Living History Forum a special assignment to implement a larger educational project on the different forms of racism and intolerance. The Gothenburg University has been granted funds to build up a knowledge center for effective works to combat racism within the classroom context. This is a work to create common values that will make a difference both in school and, of course, long-term in society as a whole. We work to combat cyberbullying. The school env environment today includes all the digital meeting points. Cyberbullying is never on break. A young person can't just go home from the internet. Harassment on the net can spread wide and far, as well as it, as it may remain in the digital world and become a continuously ongoing violation long after it was created. 
The government has given the Swedish Media Council the assignment to implement the No Hate Speech campaign of the Council of Europe which is a youth campaign against hate speech and for human rights online. Through this campaign, we will raise knowledge of and combat xenophobia, sexism and intolerance. Cyberbullying can also be chargeable offenses, including extortions, slander or threats, and the police authorities in Sweden are strengthening their capacity to combat these types of crime. Cooperation with the social media platforms is, of course, a crucial key. We give the so schools specific funding to work against bullying. Different schools meet different challenges and will need various types of support to work against bullying. For one school, it can be student safety. For another, about counteracting a widespread and unhe unhealthy appearance norm. For a third, something entirely else. And the government implements national school development programs where the national agency may give the individual school support according to their needs, as well as offer principals, teachers and other school personnel ongoing in-service training on how to work against bullying and for a safe and sound environment. We work to give students and teachers more time together to build up those crucial relationships. We know that the presence of adults can make a big difference in discovering and countering bullying among students. And we know that healthy relations is the key for students to actually tell one of the teachers what they've been through. The government has added significant funds to be used for hiring more teachers and other personnel in school. And we can see that it gives results. The number of personnel is increasing, also counted per students, even now, when the number of students is rapidly growing in Sweden. Preschool groups number have fewer kids, which increases the teacher's ability to give each child more attention. Not since 1993 have the groups in the preschool been smaller. Also, we have stopped the growing of the groups in the public youth recreation centers, the Fritishem, which is very important for the social relationship with the young kids, especially those kids that come to the school with not uh, as, ma as much support from, uh, from home as others. We also work for less than the amount of administration for every teacher. Every child has the right to a schooling that is safe, instructive and development. A right to feel joy, curiosity, fulfillment of learning. A schooling free from bullying. Our work for a bully-free school is a work done within the schools, but it does not end at the gate of the schoolyard. It's also about how the society as a whole works and what signals society send. All we who consider ourselves as adults have a responsibility to act against bullying in all forms, regardless of where it shows its ugly face. Schools can do much to stop bullying, and much is being done each and every day. But to make the work successful, the work must include, include the whole society. We must show courage, react to pu public bullying. When we, for example, just an example taken out of context, look at the political debate, what signals does it send? When young people listen, what impressions do we give them? For a young person looking at the international politics, it might seem that bullying is a key to success. That offensive words about people from other countries, or even people with disabilities, or even all women, are not only accepted, but also a way to get trusted with the most influential jobs in the world. I'm serious. This does create new challenge challenges for the work to prevent and counteract bullying in schools. We need, on the political level, where some of us work in different countries, to set another example. When we politicians talk about bullying in school, we cannot at the same time turn a blind eye on how we act ourselves. Political debate that might have wit and sting, but it should never have indignity. We should be hard on each other, but never on the ones with less power than ourselves. We are many here fighting bullying, 
and for every child's right to get a good education. It inspires me great to see all of you here from different countries all over the world to come together to fight bullying. I surely hope you will have a great final day on the, this great conference because this is a fight that unites us and it's a fight for a stronger, better and continuously learning society. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Gustav, for your... Thank you so much, Gustav, for that inspirational and comprehensive introduction for today. Thank you, Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.